Now that we've taken a look at website wireframing, we're going to take a look at some different software. We're going to start with the Pencil Project, which is one of my favorite pieces of software for um, mocking up websites. Now, one of the things I like about this is that it's open source, it's free. Um, and uh, a couple things that's kind of interesting about it, you can get it as a Firefox add-on or you can get it um, as a standalone application. Um, another thing you want to look at are the stencils that are available for things like Android and other icons or flowcharts or um, all sorts of different things, even touchscreen gestures, there's thumbnail mockups, um, and some others that you can actually create yourself. And there's also export templates that you want to know about. And we're going to be using the um, naked HTML um, output template here in a little bit. Anyway, once you've downloaded the software and installed it, then you're going to open it up. This is basically what you're going to get. It looks like a typical application. Um, over on your left, you're going to see common shapes um, or widgets that you're going to be using um, to design with and over on the right you have your page. Um, one of the things that's very important about this page is checking the properties of it. Um, first thing you want to do is give it a page for what page it is on your website or whatever project it is. If it's the main page or the home page or whatever, it's just important that it has a name that reflects that. Now the next thing is what size you're doing. Now you'll see that Typically, we have you know the web sizes, um, but you can make custom pages for possibly a Android phone or an iPhone, which has a certain resolution. I'm going to go ahead and use the web page long um, because that represents kind of the project we're mocking up here. I'll hit apply, and you'll see then I've got that page. Now, to use these different widgets um, or shapes, all you have to do is drag them out and then change the properties. Just double click and you can change some text. You can also change um, the size of the fonts and, and what font is being used. Although, be aware of choosing fonts that um, are not really web safe fonts. Um, you have to be careful about what you choose there and what text. If it's going to be um, a larger pane of text like this one, then you probably want to make sure that you stay with the standard fonts. Now, I'm going to fill this with text easily just by right-clicking and choosing Actions, Generate Long Text, which is great. This is excellent for being able to test out what maybe a paragraph or short paragraph in this case would look like. If you need to go in and change, you know, some other settings about it, you'll notice that it doesn't easily allow you to create um, uh, what is it, uh, breaks, but if you hold down the shift and enter, then you can kind of simulate the break of, of different paragraphs. But just hitting enter takes you out of it, so just be aware of that. Now, another thing that you can um, want to be aware of is that objects automatically can kind of um, align with each other, which I really do like about this software quite a lot. Um, you can also select multiple items and choose aligning tools or even group those together by right clicking and choosing group. Now they'll always move as a single group. If you double click on it, you can still kind of edit the objects inside, which is kind of nice. Then you can also rescale that group, but you'll see it kind of messes with you a little bit when you've got um, text frames inside there. So it doesn't actually work that well for resizing groups with text frames. Um, you'd want to ungroup it, change your text frame there, and then regroup these objects if you really wanted to mess with that a little bit more. Alright, now another object you can bring in, something like the rectangle here. You can double click on a rectang rectangle and give it a label, which can be kind of nice. You can also change properties about this. If you right click and go to properties, you can change the properties such as the background color, border, and text. You can also change these properties on the top left. You can change the text in a little bit more interactive way, which is kind of nice. since you don't have to hit the apply. You can do, uh, let's see what this one does. I'm not even sure, I can't remember what, oh, that does the border color. That's what that is. And this one does something else. So I don't know if that one's actually being used. All right, so let's look at some of the other things you can use. You've got HTML text, which is similar to this one here. 
If you double click on it, you'll see that we get a little bit more though, because now we can do, if I hit that shift enter and I, now I can select those items and make bullet points out of them. You just have to remember to hit the shift enter in the software. So let's get that back. See, it's a little glitchy sometimes. I'm trying to find other ways and try and control enter. And it just seems like the shift enter is the only way to do things. It doesn't seem to be easy to make things go back to being a non-list afterwards. So you just do have to be aware of some of the limitations. This is not great for comping out lots and lots and lots of text. It's just not made for that. It's made for comping out a page. Now we've got other things like breadcrumbs that we can use, which are kind of nice. Um, and one of my favorite sections is the sketchy GUI section, because here you can create boxes and buttons and all sorts of stuff that have a more sketchy look, which are a little bit more along the lines of what you would see um, with pencil drawings. And you've got a lot of options here. They've got things like tabs and images, and you'll see the image automatically shows you the height and the size, or the height and the width of that image, which I really think is great. Now, one of the other things that you should be aware of when starting to do more complex layouts is using um, some sort of grid. Now, uh, one of my other favorite features of the Sketchy GUI section is the ability to have a 960 grid system. So I'm going to bring this grid system out, and I want to place it exactly at 0, 0. And we can do that by changing the numbers at the top, just by typing in 0 and then hit en hitting Enter. And we can also arrange this to the back. So we right-click on it, go to Arrangement, and send it to the back, and then lock it so that we can't select it anymore. If we want to unlock it, we right click on it again and unclick the locked. Now we can select the other items that we want and we can move them so that they're aligned more to that 960 grid system that we're using. And now we're also going to get you know, the right sizes of our images. At least we're going to get closer to the right sizes. There we go. <clears throat> Looks like I was pretty close on that other um, little text there. So now it, it just helps us with um, setting up how our page is going to be designed. So it's a really nice feature of doing this. Now um, we can select these items as well and copy them and paste them multiple times. If I copy this and paste it, um, then you'll see it makes a copy of it. But I'm actually going to do this when I create a new page. So I'm going to create a new page based upon this one, um, the size, and let's call this page one. And now back in the home page, I really want to move in some of these things. So let's copy that. Let's actually unlock the background. I'm going to copy that. Oh, I'm, it's kind of hard actually. So I'm going to copy the background, go to page one, paste it. Make sure it's put at zero, zero, and lock it. Now I can go back to page one, and I can copy and paste some of this other stuff. It's actually, that's one of the things that I forgot that I don't like about this. You do have to press Shift and Control together to select multiple items. Control C, I go to page one, and then I do Control V, and they usually snap back to where they were copied from. So you can see that kind of worked now. Now on this one, I'm going to use that button and tell it to do something different. I'm going to give it a label that says home. And over here, I'm going to say page one. So um, this is not really the great placement for a button, but that doesn't matter. We'll still be able to see how we link between different pages. And you'll see that we'll get a different look, at least between the pages. So now I'm going to right click on that button choose the link to and page one. Now be aware that you can link just about on any object. You can select just anything to be able to use as a link. I can even have that hyperlink 
as a link that goes to page one. So now I'm going to come back to page one and I'm going to use that button and link it to the home page. Now all we have to do is save our project and output our um, test HTML and we're ready to go. So I'm going to save this document and uh, I'm going to save over a file I've already got, been playing with, um, and I'm ready to test it. So one of the things about um, outputting this thing is that we're going to be using export to be able to output our um, our document. And a lot of times it will come up with an error that says right here it'll say hey you can't do anything because you don't have the template. And that's where you need to make sure that you get the templates for um, sketch for pencil. Um, and I like the naked HTML one. That's the one that I'm going to use. So I'm going to use all pages in the document and I'm going to use the naked wireframe and I'm going to output it to this pencil test folder I've already created and it's output that. Now I can go to that folder and see what's there. It created pages with the two pages with the PNGs that are there and it has a resources which has some styles and it has the index file which is just basic HTML um, of it loading in the PNG and adding some image maps for interactivity. So let's test it out and see what we get. So in the background we have the PNG, but if we hover over the right spot, it's made a hotspot for us to be able to click on it and actually go to the next page. And all it's doing is actually moving down the page um, to where the next section is, because it's a single page. But this is a great way to provide an interactive walkthrough for your clients. So I hope that you enjoy using this software. Um, you definitely want to take a look at what other collections you might be able to find online and experiment with it. Um, you can save some of your own information to my stuffs. I've never really done that, but uh, I'm sure that it's possible with a little digging around. And uh, enjoy, and go on to the next tutorial on Prototyper.